Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 for the third and final part of this week's update. And the first thing we're going to take a look at here is the, is the, uh, the air filtering system, which we, we kind of don't really need anymore because we have finally managed to kill every single biter on Norvis. You can see down here we have, uh, we have confirmed a hostile extinction for this planet, which means we've killed every single biter on the planet. And therefore it's safe. We don't need to worry about pollution anymore because there's no biters for it to upset. And so Tristan's been making some uh, modifications to the, uh, to the filtration system. Now over here we still have a lot of filters that are being very, very slowly pumped. Well, they're being slowly passed around the entire factory on this red belt here and this belt goes this is a ludicrously long belt it goes all the way over here and then up round here and I think then up all the way through here up across the top oh, and down this way as well over to this core mine here and then round the edge here all the way round the outside the factory and eventually makes its way back up and comes back along this belt into here and the filters are then brought in here they're sorted for the between clean and dirty the clean ones are passed actually the they both seem to be passed into this warehouse and then passed up here, which is a little bit weird, but I don't know. Oh, we're splitting them here to, to try and tr uh, control the number that's being fed into the warehouse. But we've stopped making them, so we don't have such an overload of them anymore. Anyway, yes, as you can see, those are being brought back in around here. However, what Tristan has changed is he's essentially deactivated these trains over here. And in doing so, he's told the outposts like this one over here to essentially to stop requesting filters. And so they're, um, they're, they're no longer being fed out to be passed around the, this outpost. So it's, we're not worrying about the pollution from here anymore. They're just being stockpiled in this, in this uh, system over here. And that means eventually, once they've all sort of calmed down a bit, which this one has, he can send the trains out for one last time when they'll come out here. They'll pick up everything out of these boxes and then bring it all back to the central station. Uh, what we're going to do with all these filters uh, is, is anyone's guess really because we don't need them anymore as I say but we've still got them chugging around nicely just just for the sake of it really. And if we have a look at the pollution you can see how well it's working. They, they are keeping all of the pollution inside this area up here. So yeah, we have a, we have a, 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 an air filter system that's running all the way around the edge of the base, and you can see you can see down here as, as it, the, the clean let patch running along the, running along there as the filters work, and so yeah, we're getting all of these uh, all these filters out, and yeah, there, there's a, quite a lot of them running through here, but it still seems to be enough to keep the entire system up and running, uh, except for here where there's something went wrong with the with the underground belt. And goodness knows why that's happened. And so maybe we should just uh, decide that it's time to bring all of these back and just stockpile them all in the warehouses over here and, and, and forget about them and, and stop feeding them around and, uh, and running them around the outside of the base. In fact, doing that and then ripping up all of the uh, filtration systems, you never know, might gain us one or two UPS, who knows. But as it is, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's really worth it. it and, and it feels quite nice to know that we're actually dealing with at least some of our pollution. He has also continued to add boosting systems to lots and lots of the trains, like this, this sort of thing, where you've got lots and lots of electric motors in there, and some batteries to power them, and an uh, energy absorber to pick up power from the Tesla coils as they drive past them. So this should allow the trains to have a bit more power available to them, make them go a bit faster, and yeah, I talked about this quite a lot last week though, so I'm not going to go over it again. I am going to note though that this belt doesn't seem to be, this belt is the wrong way around, and it's flicking back around so we can actually start feeding the elevator cable parts back into this thing to, uh, to bring it back up to up to uh, up to level again. Uh, and that, that's my fault, because I put this belt here underground belt in when I put this rare metal train in and it ended up the wrong way round because well Factorio does it did had place funny business with your um, with your underground belt and putting them in the wrong way round from time to time so um, oops I, be I better fix that in the main game as well and also probably put in a, a robot port over here um, and work out why there's no power down here there's funny business going on down here. Oh, I put in a new robot port here, but it's not been powered, that's why. So we need to add that there, and then we need to tell this one to start... Oh, we have already told it to start requesting those, and we'll tell it to request from wherever they are as well, because we want them to definitely be brought in. So if we can get some power over here, that should get that working, and we can get the, um, get the elevator cables running as as we would like them to. I also mentioned the Immersite train earlier, and this is the one that brings the uh, the Immersite crystals and the Immersion plates from, from this station here, where they're being dropped off by the spaceships that come in from Taras, and then takes them off to wherever they need to go. Um, and that was previously, well, it previously got stuck in a bit of a loop where it was going from here to the crystal drop-off that's somewhere in orbit, I can't remember where, and then back again, just going round and round that loop because we'd run out of crystals, and that was an unfortunate design problem. Tristan has made some improvements to that one, and he says he's done it by setting some uh, logic on the uh, on the Immersite crystal drop station in material science. Now, this is material science. Um, I don't. Where, where's the Immersite crystal drop? Here it is down here. This is one of those funky stations where the where there's a a, a a special train station here called Norvis Down. This means that we can have a train that's set to go to both stations in orbit and stations on the ground and go to either of those whenever it's triggered. And I've explained this a few times before, so I won't do it again. But I am planning to do a video about how all our funny train systems and how they work. So uh, yeah, we'll check that one out when it comes out, if uh, if and when it does. But the point is that this this one over here allows it to uh, to loop back and go to go back to the uh, pickup station 
instead of going down to Norvis if nowhere on down on the planet needs the immers Immersion plates. So we've got logic here that says if there's no requests coming in on the signal for Immersion plates, then uh, enable the, sta the station. So that means the train will then go to this station and won't go down to the ground. So over here at the moment, it's, it's, it's come over here for Immersite Crystal Drop. We currently have this station disabled because somewhere on the ground requires plates. And so that means that when this train has finished unloading the crystals here, it will then go down the elevator and drop off the... Uh, it will then go down the, the actual actual elevator rather than just going to this local station and then drop off the um, immersion plates down there on the ground and then come back up again to, to, pick, to pick some more up. So we are still trying to re refill our stockpiles of all of the uh, immersite things. As you can see here, there was a big gap on the uh, in the material science for trying to make the, the material testing packs. So we've got a lot of that being brought over here at the moment. But it, this means that the train can now also take the plates down to the ground. It does mean that we might run out of crystals on the ground because it's all being unloaded here, but there's only so much we can we can do to, to, to keep this going. So now it's going to zip off and it's going to go down the elevator and take, take the uh, plates down to the ground. Maybe we should have a second train in here, but maybe that would just cause problems. I'm not sure. Um, as it is, I'm, I'm optimistic that once we fill up all the buffers again, then everything will be okay. I don't think we're getting through material science that quickly, although that said, the testing packs are flooding through along here. They are refilling absolutely everything. So, okay, it's going to be quite a while. <laughs> oh, blimey, it's all the way up here. It's going to be a long old time until we've got enough um, material testing packs on the on the belts going up here and into the into the warehouse down here and then filled up with enough immersite crystals to, to, to fill all this back up to here and, and keep this satisfied. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of crystal required. I hope the system System over on Taras is capable of producing. Now it does seem to be we have we have a good healthy supply over here. So I'm optimistic that we're bringing over enough from Taras. The big question is. Are, is the train taking enough of it away to wherever it's needed? And I don't know the answer to that. We'll have to uh, have to wait and see how things go. It has occurred to me that material science is really quite close to here, so we could probably pull a belt out of either this warehouse or this one down here. Uh, use some underground deep space belts to get through here and then bring the Immersite crystals directly over to, to the material science area over here. I don't want to do that because that feels like that feels wrong. It's, it's, it's not separate, keeping all the areas separate like we, like we try to do in most, most of the time. But it's something we could do if we had an absolute crisis with it, and it might be better than putting in an additional train. Hmm. Let me know what you think. Down on the ground, Tristan has sorted out that belt I was complaining about in the iron uh, disposal area over here. It turns out he was partway through up doing an upgrade over here. So now we're, now things are flowing quite nicely, as you can see. They're, they're all being fed into these splitters, and then it can all go into this chest over here. Uh, and that's allowed, and, and that apparently is, is a system he's been doing to improve throughput, I think, for all of the different resources that are being brought in here. And you can see now that quite a lot of this is being taken down. This system, to be turned into matter, he's put in lots of extra tanks. I'm not quite sure what he expects to use all this matter for, but we do have a lot of matter available now if we if we decide we want to turn it into something. And I know we've been doing a research into a matter cube, which is a way of densifying all this liquid matter and turning it into or fluid matter and turning it into a solid brick that I don't really know what we then do with it. Maybe we then take it somewhere else, then we unpack it and it turns back into a load of fluid. We'll have a look at that when we get on to having actually researched it and uh, and see and seeing what it can do. So yes, he's put in the similar upgrades for copper and uh, rare metals, so we can now have lots and lots flowing in from over down here, where it's being brought in by the disposal system, uh, chucked up in, in this way, and then going into, into all of these systems over here, where, we, as, as I've told you before, we're prioritising bringing it over to the stations over here, to be taken away to be used for strategic metal purposes. And then any that's left over is, is then going to be pumped down to be made into matter. And if we've still got a load of it spare when we've filled up completely on matter, we can then start trying to make it into, uh, in, in, into landfill as well. And there's something stuttery going on over here. I think this might be because we can't um, we can't turn this iron into iron ore into matter quickly enough. So there's a bit of an overflow. So some of it's going into this machine here, and we're turning it into landfill anyway. C'est la vie. We do have one, two, three, four full warehouses and another nearly well 80 percent full warehouse of landfill that's quite a lot we may need to fill in a lake or something at some point just to get rid of it all oh this is a bit ridiculous but yeah apparently we're producing iron ore faster than we faster than we know what to do with it uh, even the copper is being used up as well uh the rare metal is not <laughs> that makes a change the rare metal and the stone are the ones that we don't have enough of iron and copper we have so much we're just sending it down the disposal systems 
Well, the demand waxes and wanes, I suppose, so yeah, why not? Over here, he's also upgraded a load of the belts around here from a blue to green, I believe. Yes, blue to green along here, because sometimes some, some of the machines towards the end of these rows weren't running. There, there wasn't enough coming through. In fact, there still isn't enough coming through. Uh, maybe these maybe these actually need to be purple as well. I, I don't know. Or maybe maybe the, uh, the green needs to come a little bit further through along here. But this machine on the end is... It's, it's running a bit, but it's certainly not running full time like uh, some of the earlier ones along the, along the chain are. Uh, the rest of them do seem to be okay though. It's, so yeah, we've probably got one. Oh, no, there's there's one that's just stopped again. We've got a decent amount coming through here. It, it, it's pretty good. And if we look at this warehouse, this warehouse is mostly empty. So despite what I said in the previous video, we do seem to be churning through the uh, core chunks. At least now that we've got this extra little, little bit of extra speed in there, we're churning through them faster than we're bringing them in and faster than we're unloading them in the station. So you can see that trickling down really quickly there. And this train isn't ready to go off to another uh, disposal area yet. But there is another train behind it and another one stored down here. So there's a couple more trains ready to come in, but this one isn't ready to go off yet. So that means we've got through the backlog of core fragments from core mining around the rest of the base. We are able to bring it over here fast enough. And as you can see, we've now basically used it all up. So that's going pretty well. We, we, are, we are chewing through lots and lots of core fragments, but it does seem to be producing virtually all of the resources we need, he says optimistically. The Graphimatron sort of agrees. Uh, we have a decent, yeah, we're not quite full over here on, um, is that iron? I think that's, I think that's iron ingots. Um, the, the plates don't count anymore because we're making them on demand. Plastic's a little bit low. Blue circuits is very low. Um, that was a problem with Holmium earlier, uh, last time I looked. Rocket fuel we've stopped making, so that doesn't matter. This stuff over here, we are we seem to have shortages of lots of these um, Deep Space Science catalogues. However, I think that's just because we don't have a station we're storing them in, so that doesn't really count. As we talked about yesterday, the beryllium's kind of low. The Holmium and the Iridium are both completely dead, uh, as is the Vitalic Reagent and the Naquium. So we, yeah, there's a lot of shortages going on over here, so there's going to be lots of things to look into. Arcosphere balancing seems to be going reasonably well. They're mostly green most of the time, so that seems to be okay. I presume that the blue circuits, as I said, is, is down, to, uh, down to, yes, it's a shortage of Holmium cables coming in. Uh, so that's down to the shortage of Holmium, which is also shown on the graph. So, uh, yeah, we need, to, we need to get those one sorted, but I know Tristan has it in, is at least thinking about it. And over here, you can see the inner site is actually doing pretty well. It's all in the green now. So it's, we're now down to just these three that are the, the main problem areas. So that'll be something for us to look at tomorrow, I think. There have been a few other little bits here and there. Tristan's done more upgrading of the belts that are bringing all of the scrap down into this area. I believe he was talking about upgrading this box over here or putting more loaders into it or something like that. Looking at it, I'm not, I have to admit I'm not certain, but I don't think he has. Um, I, I suggested maybe he should just turn it into a warehouse so he gets lots more uh, input room onto it. Uh, but at the moment, we seem to have plenty of throughput for whatever sciences we're doing. That must mean that the, uh, the material science isn't running at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've, we've got a decent amount of throughput here and things seem to be mostly working quite well. Apparently it was the memory cards that were struggling, so he's been looking down, yeah, ah, down here it's this belt that he's upgraded. So this one down here has been upgraded to a deep space belt that comes all the way down to where the memory cards are being spat out, because occasionally, sometimes you seem to get enormous floods of memory cards, and sometimes they're, they're, I think it's because sometimes they get sort of mixed in with the uh, with the, the scrap, so then when you declog de the scrap, you then get a sudden flurry of memory cards coming out. Um, but right now it seems to just be, it seems to be relatively sensible, but that's probably because we're not actually doing any science at the moment, because due to the lack of Holmium, as I talked about, we've run out of energy science pack 4 and therefore the energy weapon damage uh, 13 which requires uh, energy 4 has stopped running so that's a bit of a, a bit of a fail there. We need to we need to give that one a good poke and make and, and try and try and get that running a bit more freely. He also discovered that this belt along here was, was jamming up when we have large quantities of broken data cards coming in. And that was largely because if we look at the recipe here, you can see we bring in one broken data card and we put out five scrap. So for every one thing that comes in along this belt along here, five things have to go out on this belt. And so that requires you to have quite a bit of extra throughput along here, which means which is why this one now needs to be upgraded, but this one doesn't. And so that's allowing us to get now, well, as you can see, it's running fine now, but that's because the science isn't really going. Uh, <laughs> eventually, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, get the science running a bit more freely, and again, and then you'll see all of this running at full speed at some point in one of the next, I mean, probably in the next stream. Or I could kick physical projectile damage 13 off, and that'll uh, that'll drain a bit of the uh, science through. So we'll, we'll set that one running, and we'll come back and see how the scrap's doing in a little while. 
Mark has now started making superior filter inserters, so he's bringing in normal stack inserters uh, by bot and then combining them here with lots and lots of exciting things, including immersion, well in theory including immersion plate, but we don't have any of it at the moment, so that's not going to work. Um, but in theory he's making the superior in filter inserters over here. And this is quite nice because the superior inserters are faster than the normal stack inserters. They're a decent chunk faster, so they are worth using. And so there have been quite a few builds in places where we've been able, where we've been using the superior long inserters or long filter inserters, like over here for example, but normal stack inserters, because the stack inserters were fast enough, but we wanted the extra speed for the long inserters. You can see how much faster that is than, than a red one would be. Um, but now that we're getting to a few places where we actually could do with that speed over a short distance as well, so we thought it'd be good to have the normal short inserters running at superior speed as well. So, you know, so we've just got the full set, every, all of the all of the different bits and pieces to, to give us every option available when we're starting to build stuff. There does seem to be a Mercian plate available over here though, so maybe there's something funny going on with the prioritization. I thought that was something Tristan dealt with fairly recently in attempt to prioritize stuff being brought over to here because it's required for the factory but maybe it was just the um, maybe it was just the unloading of the heavy bearings but it was this one that got prioritized not the uh, not the immersion plate and I don't even know where the immersion plate comes from probably along the bus uh, yeah it looks like it comes in along this red belt here and down from yeah from the bus down here so we're not feeding it onto the bus fast enough or if we are if we are feeding it onto the bus it's getting gobbled up by other things as well uh, scrolling all the way along here and I don't see any so yep it looks like we have we have an immersion problem still uh, we're chucking as much in as we can with the spaceships and it's kind of hard to tell whether we're using it up as fast as it's coming in whether we are actually filling the buffers up or whether it's just sort of throwing peanuts into a black hole. Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll find out eventually, see if things get better. And if we look at the graph, we can see that over the last 10 hours we produced 380,000 and used 340,000. So that means there is 40,000 more immersion plate knocking around somewhere in the system than there was before. Uh, these spikes make me think this is the spaceships coming and going. Um, so a spaceship comes in, we get a spike as it, fills, as it refills all the buffers. Then we get another spike when the next spaceship comes in. I don't know if that's true. But it, I, it feels like the most likely reason why we'll get this sort of shape of the uh, of the plates being made, because I think all the inputs are just steady state from core mining. Although there is a um, there is an additional supply coming in of, of rare metals coming in, so maybe that's causing problems. We aren't making any right now, so let's go and have a quick look at Taras and find out why not. Because we're not asking for it. Okay, so we think we've got enough over in Norbis at the moment. So presumably that means the problem isn't in the making of it; it's in the taking it from Norbit to wherever it's needed. So maybe we should be splitting off to two separate trains, one to take crystals, one to take plates. Maybe we need a second train that's doing the whole sort of round trip shenaniganry thing. Maybe we need to do secret option number three. I don't know, it, it seems like, but it seems like over here we are making the immersite plates and the immersion crystals fast enough. It's the other way around, isn't it? It's immersite crystals and immersion plates, but it, who cares? Uh, <laughs> we're not making, the, we are making these things fast enough, we're just not transporting them around sufficiently once they get to Norbit, I think? So, yeah, a bit more um, encouragement needed there, I think. Mark also started producing dimensional anchors, and these take in superconductive cables, Nacrim Tesseract, heavy assemblies, lattice pressure vessels, AI cores, and comprehensive deep space catalogues. Jeez. Uh, that's, that, 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 that's pricey. And, and you get a dimensional anchor, and I don't know what that is. It, it apparently oh, it uses a star's gravity well as a stabilizing point for a spatial anomaly. Now, I don't really know what that means, so we get the thing here, it tells us what it does, and then down here we've got it, but there are no other researchers that come after it, so it's not an intermediate that you need to build something else. Maybe it's something to do with the Fenestra puzzle, because that is referred to as the anomaly, so that's going to be my guess. Uh, we shall see when we get, maybe, maybe at some point we'll go out there and we'll stick one of these down, and maybe, maybe it'll give us some useful information towards solving the puzzle, or maybe it'll just be a part that's required to get the, uh, to get the Stargate up and running again. We'll find out. We'll find out later, I guess. Um, uh, should I have spoiler warned that? I don't think so, because I didn't really know anything. So I, I was just making wild, wild, unfounded guesses. And as promised, I've woken the science systems back up again by doing the, uh, the physical projectile damage and also by giving some of the trains a bit of a poke. I won't deny that part. <laughs> and now you can see there's huge amounts of scrap pouring out of material science, as is traditional whenever that uh, gets an excuse to do anything at all. And then that's coming down onto, onto the belts down here, and we're gradually feeding it away. And as you can see down here, the middle belt is the one that's taking away uh, normal scrap, and that's running twice as fast as the others, because they, we produce so much more of the, that scrap than the other things. So it seemed like it, that was an upgrade I did a while back, and it seemed like a good idea. Uh, still having a bit of trouble shoving everything in at the top here but it means we've got a, a nice well we sometimes we've got a nice solid belt that's coming out of the bottom anyway that then runs along here down the belt all the way along here 
And as it gets to the normal science, the actual science park area, we're picking up quite a lot of extra data cards coming out here. So you can see there's a lot of junk data cards, some black broken data cards, and even a decent number of the um, of the uh, unused data cards or the fresh data cards that can be reused. Uh, and they come out in sort of in in, in 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 large numbers as well. You can see the how, just how many are pouring down here as we're as we're actually starting to produce the science packs. And so they get all get poured onto here as well. So you, you can see why we had so many data cards that we needed to worry about over in the recycling area. Uh, and they all then carry on down the belt, all the way along here, to the recycling area, where we're also seeing a lot of the um, contaminated scrap being pulled in from the matter sciences down there. So matter science produces a surprisingly large amount of scrap as well. It's not quite onto the same level as material, but it's it's a lot compared to any of the other ones. So you can see now we've got a huge amount of stuff coming in here and there's uh, lots of splitters and undergrounds and things around here to sort it in various ways and try and get things going roughly where we want them. And that pours in down here and so you can see we are still able to deal with the junk data cards at the, at the rate they're coming in at. They're, yes, they're flowing down this belt here and uh, but they're not actually stacking up down here. The computers are all busy but we are, using, we are managing to reformat them as fast as they're coming in. Down here, the broken data cards, you can see here, this, this belt is quite full uh, from all these broken data cards coming in. And so you, you can see why this needs to be upgraded, as I was saying earlier. And then as we go further and further down, again, you've got the sort of the jam, a bit of a jam happening here with all of the uh, the good data cards. Because there's so many of them coming out of reformatting. And they all need to be sorted and dealt with and taken down to the bottom where they'll be taken away by another train. And so that's filling up quite a lot as well. And there's even more on the other belts here. You've got clean scrap going coming up here from the contaminated scrap cleaning area. All of that scrap is flowing in here. And this is actually gradually going up at the moment. So when we're uh, when we're running absolutely completely flat out with trying to produce the material science and everything else, we th we are actually producing scrap faster than we can deal with it. Fortunately, material science only tends to run in bursts because it'll produce a load of scrap when it generates another load of, um, of catalogues to be shipped off to science. And then it'll calm down for a while and we'll be able to churn through all of the scrap that we stockpiled in this storehouse over here. And as you can see, we're a bit more than 10% full, but it's going up very slowly. It's being eaten through quite quickly along here. Um, but this is an area where it might, we, where we may consider having to upgrade to better, uh, better loaders, or perhaps redo all of the uh, spaghetti around here and turn this into a warehouse, move it a little bit further out. And a warehouse would mean we'd be able to have a lot more inputs around it, so we'd be able to get the scrap in a lot more quickly. And then maybe we could bring this belt in from the bottom instead and feed, feed it in, in here instead of having instead of having it merging in with the other belts around the top. I don't know. There are lots of possibilities here, but we might need a way of getting through the scrap faster than we are at the moment. It depends how much material science we're using and how much how busy material science is. So again down here you can see this solid belt of uh, memory cards as I was saying and all, all the uh, contaminated scrap flooding down here as well so that down here the contaminated scrap gets pulled out and then this is where we're getting all the memory cards now onto the onto faster belts so again, now we only have uh, well we have a more than half full uh, deep space belt coming down here to feed them all into down into the down 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 down, down into the pickup station down here. And interestingly, we seem to have pulled, churned through enough of them elsewhere that we're actually making these belt, uh, these cards as well, as, as well as recycling them. I haven't seen this bit running for quite a while, but to be fair, when you're when you're running a system through, you do lose memory cards on the way through. Some of them get broken, some of them just disappear. The conservation of memory cards is not quite a hundred percent, especially as, as I say, a number of them get broken. So, yep, we have to make replacements from time to time. But we do have a nice healthy flood of, of um, recycled ones coming in down here, to, coming in down here to go into the into the uh, warehouses. And so that brings us on to the research we've done in the last stream. At the top of the list was the Deep Space Science Pack 4, so, and unlocking Deep Space Science Pack 4 has unlocked lots of these sort of the, the not quite inf the things that will eventually be infinite researchers but aren't yet because we, we've still got new new ways of doing it with different science packs. If, if, uh, and now there's a catchy title. So the energy energy weapon damage, physical projectile damage, and so on. All all these ones across here, all these upgrades are things that we can now do because we have Deep Space Science 4, uh, but we can't actually get on to doing them yet because we haven't done the prereq, we haven't done the previous versions of them. So you see up here we're doing th physical projectile damage 13 uh, and this is physical projectile damage 16 so we've got quite a few more to do before we get to this one. Uh, but that's sort of somewhat immaterial. Uh, the interesting stuff we've got down here is, is getting things like the factory spaceship upgrade which is, is granted another standard infinite upgrade but it's this one's actually useful. We've also unlocked the Spaceship Victory as a potential thing we can research now but that requires us to have got a, um, what, are, what even are you, a distortion, oh, we have this requires us to build a distortion drive and feed it with an interstellar travel data and fly out with a very, very fast long-range spaceship. So we're probably not going to do this, at least not soon, or at least if we do do it, we'll do it as a sort of side thing and not save because we don't want to trigger the the uh, complete game completion uh, from doing the spaceship victory because we want to go for the other victory instead because we think that's going to be interesting. 
Also, we can't do that one until we've done these two as well. Yeah, the all-seeing eye and intergalactic transceiver. I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll go and look at those. I think those might, might be a Crestorio edition. We're also going to be able to now look into teleportation, which will get us the planetary teleporter, I guess. Oh yes, that's a, a way of teleporting around on a planet's surface, but not between planets, which is a bit of a shame. Between planets would be much more useful, um, even if it was just for getting ourselves around. We'll also get the Arcolink storage, and this is the, um, this is the chest that allows you to teleport items from one surface to another. Lots of people really like these, and I, and I can see the use for them, especially for something like Naquium, where you're trying to transport it an incredibly long way. But the thing is, because they re rely on Deep Space Science 4, by the time you actually manage to unlock them and are capable of making them, you've probably already got all of your logistic systems up and running and in place, and so there's not really that much of an advantage to improving the, uh, the, the throughput, because, well, they, they're, it already works, why would you need to make it any faster? And as well as that, they require quite a lot of Arcospheres in order to make them. So there you go, you need 10 lambdas in order to make one Arcolink storage. Um, and I don't know if that's just one end of it, so you need 20 to, to, to have the chest, at the, uh, the source chest and the destination chest. I think you probably do. So given that we've, uh, we've got less than 200 Arcospheres at the moment, I don't want to use 10% of them in just tra for transporting stuff around. And then another 10% for another thing we want to transport around and so on. So I think we'll probably, won't, we'll probably be, we we'll probably, we will research it. And we'll probably actually make one just for the sake of it, because we're trying to be fairly completionist, but they're not a thing that I tend to use in large quantities. We did long range star mapping 11 and 12, and so that means that in the Informatron we've now got an extra couple of things in the star mapping. So down here, there's we've found two more uh, symbols down here. We still haven't gone out and sort of cleared out any more pyramids though, so I think we need to do that. We need to do that. We need to go off to, uh, as well as to Talos and Taras, I think are the ones we, we've done. We also need to go to Tangos, Toxinora, Yang, Vin, Regis, Narsus, and so on and so on. Sort out, go, go out to lots of these, lots of these um, structures and find out what's out there. So that that could be a uh, something for somebody to do in the next stream, perhaps, because we, we've got we're getting to the point where we need a bit more information to find out which of our theories make sense and which ones don't. I mentioned the dimensional anchor earlier um, because Mark has built this one. Um, what it's for, nobody knows. We shall find out soon. But as I say, it says anomaly, so that makes me think of Fenestra. We'll find, but we'll find out in the future. We've also unlocked Advanced Science Two, which is how we were able to start making them, as I was talking about yesterday. Uh, so we're now we're, we're now able to make these. And again, this gets you the same sort of unlocks that we were seeing with Deep Space Science. So we've got all of these um, infinite, semi-infinite researchers across here. Uh, the high-tier factory spaceships. We've got a nice energy shield Mark Six over here that we can start we, we can start working on uh, and, and teleportation. We can make that matter cube. This is the thing I was talking about earlier so this is a thing that allows you to turn matter into a cube um, so you turn 2000 matter into one cube or you can turn one cube back into 1000 matter so you lose half of it in the process but you can make it into a into a cube whether will this be useful we'll find out later because I, I don't really know and I'm not going to go trawling in FNEI because that kind of feels like spoilers but we will research it at some point and then decide whether there's anything we want to do with it it also unlocks exciting Crastoria related things like the intergalactic transceiver and the singularity reactor. So those are going to be uh, potentially useful. The singularity reactor could be quite useful for powering really, really high demand systems because this is capable of producing two gigawatts all by itself. Um, I guess it's fueled by these uh, charged singularity fuel cells, so we'll need to learn how to make those as well. That's going to be fun. Um, and then from there, we can also get a portable singularity reactor. So that's going to be a generator we can chuck in our armor that's going to presumably produce ridiculous amounts of power. So this has a maximum output of 4 megawatts, compared to the one we're using at the moment, which is 3.2. So it's, it's not that much more powerful. I was expecting it to be at least double, maybe even more. But, but no, it's only a 25% boost over the previous tier. That seems stingy to me, but um, yeah, I, it, 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 it'll, be, it'll be an improvement anyway, to get that extra little bit of oomph out of our, uh, out of our armour. And as you saw earlier, we've been trying to carry on working on Energy Weapon Damage 13, which makes all our laser turrets, personal and mounted, and even the big uh, laser artilleries, that bit more powerful and we'll get us an extra what, how much of a boost it gets. Another plus 50%. Now these these aren't multiplicative, so we don't. it's not quite as much of a boost as it sounds like, but an extra plus 50% uh, of, of normal base damage does sound quite nice to have. We're currently at plus 460 percent, so that would take it up to plus 510 percent. So instead of doing five and a half times normal damage, we do about six times normal damage. So, you know, it, it's a significant increase, but it's not absolutely earth shattering. It might be biter shattering though. Tristan says we've also been chipping away at the mining productivity 12 um, when we've when we've had biological sciences available because you know that's another one that would be useful to have and we're going and we're trying to be fairly completionist about all of these all these non-infinite ones they're starting to get asked ask for silly silly numbers over here though so we may change our mind on this later and change the rules but um, for now we're going to keep plugging away at them and additional mining productivity is is always useful so we might as well get, might as well keep going at it. 
And so that brings us to the end of another episode. There is a lot of scrap coming in here. Look at all of this. Blimey. Um, so yes, we will be back tomorrow to continue the stream. Uh, another another session starting at 7.30pm UK time as usual. Uh, where we'll be going in and trying to solve all the problems we've been talking about in the last couple of streams. Such as all those resource shortages I've been talking about today. There's quite a lot in there that needs to be dealt with. And there's a few other little bits and pieces here and there that, uh, that, that need some improvement. I won't be back on Wednesday for a satisfactory stream, I'm afraid, because I'm off on holiday, so there will be no uh, no streams for two and a half weeks, I suppose. There's going to be two full weeks of no stream, and there's no stream on this Wednesday. Uh, but I should be back on April the 15th, as normal, with another uh, Factorio K2SE stream, where we'll be, um, I don't know, we'll be carrying on with whatever we don't manage to fix tomorrow, I suppose. Uh, so yes, normal service will be resumed as soon as I get back. There are going to be one or two videos coming out while I'm away. I shall hopefully have the, uh, the normal update videos coming out uh, during, uh, next weekend. We'll see if I have time to create them. I'm, I'm hoping I will, but we'll, we'll have to see. And I've got one or two other Thursday night videos that should be coming out while we're away as well. So, you know, something to look forward to. There's a few things that are going to be coming out, but the channel is, I'm afraid, going to be quite a lot quieter than normal. Still, that just means I'll be coming back with extra eager to play more Factorio and get back into it. So, I hope to see you then. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.